NFL free agency kicked off a few days ago. Uh, a lot of moving and shaking. The Patriots were very active this week. Um, what, what was probably some of your favorite moves that you saw over the past few days? Um, okay, so I think for me, the biggest move that I saw, and I understand the Patriots dropped a whole bunch of money on different guys, which I love. I think that's going to help with uh, help Cam Newton out. Um, I think I don't even think they're finished yet because um, I know they just signed another tight end as well, um, a third tight end. But I think the biggest move was the Chiefs signing Joe Thune. Um, You know, we spoke it was just just uh, it was the last week's show. We were like, yo, what are they doing? Releasing they released both of their linemen, you know, Eric Fisher, and then we even you know we talked about the late season injuries and whatnot and the back problems and and whatnot. But you bring in an All Pro uh, lineman who can play tackle and guard that was that would be huge for the Chiefs because could you imagine you know when they had to rotate everything for the Super Bowl when Fisher got injured after the, the at, during the Buffalo game and it was just chaos and we saw you know like you wouldn't think that moving a guy from guard to tackle to tackle a guard would be that much of a difference in your in your protection but it was and and they got dog walked by the Tampa Bay front four. So to bring in a guy like Joe Thune, who's all pro and can play either tackle or guard, I thought that was one of the, if not the biggest moves outside of Tampa being able to resign all of those guys because we, you know, we didn't know how they were going to do it, but they were able to franchise guy win. They re-signed Levante David for two years. They got Shaq Barrett locked in for four years. Uh, Gronk is back. You know what I mean? So and there's like one other, two other guys that they're, they're going to see about. We, we don't know what's going to happen with um and Dominica Sue just yet and Antonio Brown, but they were able to resign a lot of guys. But I think that that Joe Dooney sign up for me just because of the Chiefs are still probably the favorites to, you know, to come out of the, the, the AFC and, you know, play for Super Bowl and, and maybe even ultimately win a Super Bowl. I think that um that, that was the biggest sign up. I still, I'm still a bit confused by uh, Juju though, because maybe, you know, I can understand. All right. You don't want to go to the Ravens, maybe, you know, whatever the history between the Ravens and the Steelers, but to take less money to come back to the Steelers and you don't want to go to the chiefs who are in the last two Super Bowls, And there's a good chance they'll be in this Super Bowl, And your best season statistically came when you had a number one on the other side of you by the name of Antonio Brown, who guess what? It's pretty similar to Tyreek Hill. They're about the same size. They, you know, they do a lot of the same thing. They're both quick, speedy uh, wide receivers. And you would have fit right in with an all pro offense all the way around the board, all pro quarterback, all pro wide receiver, all pro tight end, all pro lineman. And I thought that would have been the perfect fit. I was a little bit confused by that. That might've been the worst move for me. Yeah, so I agree with you. I, I like what the Chiefs did. Um, shows you how much changes in a week, right? Because last week we were wondering <laughs> what direction are they going, and and they go get Joe Thune. Uh, they get Kyle Long, who came back out of retirement. He sat out last year, and so and then they're expected to get uh, Duvernay Terra back, the doctor, <laughs> offensive lineman. So their O line looks a lot better. Um, I like what the Patriots did in terms of quality. Like I know it looks good and it's flashy because they signed the best two tight ends. But Matthew Judon, I think, is the perfect linebacker for that system, a guy who can get after the quarterback and cover. Um, he showed that versatility in Baltimore, so Bill's going to know how to use that. I like Jalen Mills for them as well. Again, another guy who's versatile, play safety, play some corner. Bill loves those type of guys that he can mix and match around based on the, on the package and formation that you throw out at them. Um, Juju is, is very confusing to me um, for a number of reasons. One, you took less money to go back. Um, Big Ben didn't look good last year. So what am I taking less money to go back to? Like, am I expecting to boost my value by playing another year in that offense that I didn't look good in last year? And if I was going to take less money, why not wait it out, like you said, and land in a situation with a better quarterback and a better offense? Whether it was Aaron Rodgers, whether it was Patrick Mahomes, you had options with better quarterbacks. You could have gone to Seattle because Seattle ended up using their money on, on a tight end, Gerald Everett, who I like. But I'm sure they would have in, been interested if Juju wanted to go there for 5 or $6 million. So I think I, I, I think Juju completely dropped the ball on his opportunity. And again, his numbers weren't impressive last year. 
and I don't think his numbers are going to be impressive this year. Because he's not a true number one receiver. He, he's not. He's not a true number one. I think we, we know that. And I just don't understand what him or his agent were thinking by going back to Pittsburgh. If I'm Juju at his age, I want to play with a, an elite quarterback who's, who's got enough time to, to elevate me over the next two to three years. And Big Ben isn't that guy. So I don't get that move from them at all. Um, there were a couple other moves I didn't understand either. Like I, I didn't get what the, what the Titans were doing with Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree, I believe he tore his ACL in the second half of last season. So he won't even be ready for the start of the season, but they, they gave him $50 million. And I just don't get it. I mean, he played on a really good Pittsburgh defense. We know Pittsburgh has playmakers all over the place. But most importantly, Bud Dupree was opposite of T.J. Watt. So he was getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities and, and taking advantage of them. Ain't no, ain't no T.J. Watts in, in Nashville. They, they ain't got that caliber of player on their defense. And so for them to overpay for a guy who, to me, is kind of a one-trick pony, like I say, he can only get to the quarterback, and he's probably going to miss the start of the season after that injury. I didn't understand that move for them. Um, I thought Seattle, again, did well by getting Gerald Everett because I like the receivers they have with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And now you add a versatile tight end into the middle of that. Uh, for us, it's, it's more weapons. And they bring Chris Carson back, which is good as well. They needed to keep their running game. Yes. So I, I think those teams have done well for themselves. I'm interested also within your division. Um, Dallas took a lot of losses in being able to bring back Dak. Their, their secondary took some hits. Their old line isn't as good, and they didn't upgrade their old line. But I, I like what the Washington football team did by getting Curtis Samuel and getting Fitzpatrick. I think the division over there yes. got more competitive as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, although uh, Fitzpatrick has inconsistencies, you know, I, I love him, man. I still, you got to love Fitz Magic, man. Like, what, what are you going to say to that? Um, he's a definite upgrade over everything they had at quarterback last season. You know, no disrespect to Alex Smith, but I, I didn't expect him to come back and play like he did prior to that series of an injury. So no respect to him, but he's definitely upgrade over everything they have. Um, they still, you know, they they got a uh, McLaurin, so they in uh in uh was it Logan Thomas? So they got a couple of a couple of guys, young guys that can catch the football. They have a solid running game, and we know what that defensive line <laughs> is. So I I love the pickups for them. Um, I, I I you know I like I like I like you know what the what the Giants doing as well. A little subtle moves here and there. They brought in uh Devonte uh Booker to to. At running back, which I thought was going to be good, just because we don't know exactly when Saquon will be back and what Saquon will be back. Um, so I, I like that one. Um, I see that uh, they're looking at Galladay. I feel like the whole damn NFC East is looking at Galladay right now, and Baltimore is also looking at Galladay. If I had my choice, I mean, obviously I would want him to go to either the Giants or the Ravens. You know, get the Eagles, who actually signed uh, Anthony Harrison, the safety from the Vikings, which I thought was a great pickup for them. Um, but I would rather Galladay go to the Ravens just because I feel like they're in a better position to to get to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl than the Giants are right now. And an and a upgrade at wide receiver to have a solid number one could be the, the piece that pushes them over the hump because that's pretty much, I mean, the, the Ravens defense – is, is going to be in the top five. Like, they've been in the top five, I feel like, for the past 20 years. The running game is number one for the past two, three years. And, you know, the only weak spot is that wide receiver. So if you could bring in Galladay, I think that would be perfect for them. Um, but he's meeting with a couple of different teams. So we'll see how that goes. As far as Dallas goes, um, you know, listen, I, as much as we push for, you know, I, I wanted Dak to get his money because you got to get your money. But I'm, I was also pushing for that for selfish reasons as well, because I want you to suck up all of that cap space with Dak's uh, contract. Um, they are, however, talking about I, I, um, I was reading that they were talking about maybe trying to move Gallup and bring in Stefan Gilmore which I think if that was to happen, that would be a huge move for Dallas, even though they weren't able to really add anything to that offensive line. But if you could add Stephon Gilmore to your secondary, who is defensive player of the year two, you know, two years ago and, and bring him in, that would be crazy for, for, for the Cowboys. So again, there's still some moves that got to be made. There's a couple of free agents that are left and we don't know what's going to happen. You know, NFL draft is right around the corner. So I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a lot going on. There's still going to be a whole lot more trades and, 
and signings between between now and, and the NFL draft. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's going to be a very active offseason um, because there's a big discrepancy with the teams that actually have cap space and the teams that don't. And so you're going to see a lot of teams trying to unload salary and make moves. Um, and obviously all of that is because of COVID. COVID yes. really affected things, and now that we're seeing it in the cap. Um, in terms of, of Galladay, I think Baltimore makes the most sense. They need they need the weapon. They need somebody opposite of Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews. So I think he fits in well there. And as you said, that team is ready to compete right now. The Giants are in the upswing. We've spoken highly of the Giants throughout the season. And I like where Joe Judge is building there. But the Giants aren't quite there yet. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I don't know if they even know if Daniel Jones is the long-term anti-quarterback yet either. So with Baltimore, you have that stability. Their O-line will be healthy, obviously, because they took some big hits on the O-line at the end of last season. But with Lamar, with Mark Andrews, and with Hollywood Brown, I think if you add Gall Galladay to that lineup, that becomes a pretty good offense right there as well. So I like him those there. Quarterbacks, those uh, those three situations. Like if I'm Galladay, I'm definitely not going to the Eagles because that nah, would be not. too much confusion. And as as much as I want Jalen Hurts to to do well, we don't know exactly what he'll be able to do. And they haven't addressed really their offensive line issues either. They really don't have any other weapons. You know, they got Goddard, but you know, you yeah, know, the Giants would be a little bit better. But I'm going to with the MVP quarterback and a team that know was a game or two away from getting to the promised land if he goes to philly it's purely for money yeah it wouldn't be for anything else but like i said in like terms of fit million. yeah and in terms of fit baltimore is the best fit i think um and and the, the gilmore thing is interesting because there's been some some stories that i've been hearing that bill doesn't really want to trade gilmore um the conversation actually came up last year because bill knew the team was kind of in a transitional phase after tom left and he was going to give Gilmore the opportunity to, you know, try to get on with a team that could compete for a Super Bowl. But now that they've made those moves, I wonder if that conversation will, will kind of lighten up um, because they've got a good secondary, you know, with Gilmore, with uh, J.C. Jackson, with the McCordys. They've got a lot of guys that Patrick Chung actually decided to retire instead of come back. But they still got a very good secondary. So there is that flexibility that if a team is willing to give you a lot, I don't think. Michael Gallup will be enough just for Stephon Gilmore, as you said, because Gilmore, Gilmore, uh, a previous defensive player of the year and, and still playing at a very high level, Pro Bowl level, yeah. you would probably want a couple picks um, for him. But if you move on from him, I'm sure the package would have to be right because Bill doesn't just walk away from guys when they're still good. It, his track record has always been, and aside from Tom, and Tom is the exception because of his age, but Bill's track record has always been when a guy leaves New England, it's because he's towards the end of his career. He doesn't have much. Tom would have been the same thing because Tom is towards the end of his career. It just so happened and right. he ended in the ideal situation. Correct. Correct. And, 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 you know, since we're talking about organizations that know what they're doing, one organization that has absolutely no idea what they're doing is the Texans. Um, in typical Texans form, they signed Tyrod Taylor and then they traded a, a draft pick to get Ryan Finley. So if you're keeping square at home, they signed a center. They signed Ryan Lindsley from, from the Packers, which looks good on paper. Like, oh, okay, you get a center. And then we're going to trade away a draft pick for a third-string quarterback and then sign a backup quarterback. So great job by you guys not being able to execute anything of, of relevance there. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, didn't, I, I didn't understand that one either. Oh, last one, last signing, which could possibly be a good pickup. If there's anything left in the tank, the, the AJ Green uh, signing with the, with Arizona, um, you know, I mean, we're talking about a former All Pro wide receiver with AJ Green, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy the past three seasons. So I'm still, you know, up in the air. And I like AJ Green. Like he, you know, with the, the 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 All Pro years, I had him on my fantasy team. He was kicking ass for me. But you know, the past couple of years, it's like he's been hurt every year. He's missed chunks of the season. So I don't know which AJ Green the Cardinals are going to get. Um, but you know, if it works out, hey, it works out. Hopefully it does. You know, I always want I want brothers to do their best unless you play for the Cowboys. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, he, he he was a great player before the injury struck. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's fully well, I don't think last year anyway, he was fully recovered from the ankle injury. Uh, but he struggled and he's really struggled the last three seasons. One of those he missed entirely because of the ankle. So I don't know how much he really has left in the tank. He was never a big explosive receiver down the field. He was more of a physical guy. Yeah. 
So maybe him and, and D hop make that work in that sense where he's the physical guy and D hop is allowed to go down the field. But if Fitzgerald comes back, they might be the oldest wide receiver core. In the world. I mean, if Fitzgerald comes back, that's one of them teams that would have looked great on Madden like six years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he has much left in the tank, honestly. And I think they're just kicking the tires and hoping he does, but I, I really don't think he has much. Yeah, I, I agree. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 